Hey folks, so today we're going to do all three acts and we're going to use the film The Matrix from 1999 and we're going to do all three acts with the scenes. I'm sure there's missing scenes, you know, you can't do every scene, but this is just a general guide of how you would fill out your own from first act, second act and third act. And let's dive into that. So act one intro introduce the hero in their everyday life highlight their unfulfilled stagnant existence and hinting at the deeper flaws and desires that will drive the story so in the beginning we see trinity carrie Ann moss is pursued by agents in a dramatic chase and escape sequence so this is establishing the world the weird physics something's not right the mood everything and then you're then introduced to Mr. Anderson or Thomas Anderson, AKA Neo Keanu Reeves as a hacker by his computer. So, but right in that same scene, we see, you know, Morpheus coming onto his, his, the inciting incident. So let's read that the inciting incident at the 10 minute mark or the 10 percent mark, depending if it's a page count or whatever it is, page count minutes, or percentage wise an inciting incident disrupts the hero's life compelling them into a new situation setting their goal for the story initiating a change in their inner life so he's looking for a, you know a different life so morpheus comes into his life because he's been searching for morpheus he knows something's up and that's the inciting incident at least from my way i see it and then you have new situations and that is the hero enters a new situation meeting new people or facing new challenges which gives them a glimpse of their potential and begins to affect their inner world though they still cling on to their old lives or old selves so he obviously meets trinity and warns neo that he's in danger that he needs to find morpheus lawrence fishburne and those scenes you can see probably some of them on the left side uh, all these new encounters, then he goes back to his life. He, he gets called in by the agents. Uh, he tries to make an escape, but then he doesn't because he, he's too afraid. So the inciting incident leads him onto this new path, but then he gives up. But then once he gets essentially, you know, abused or whatever by the agents, he kind of believes it but then more so when trinity takes the tracker out of his stomach in the car so it's like a faith thing and he goes and takes the red pill which is turning point two he makes he formulates a specific outward visible goal initiating an internal struggle as they begin to let go of their old self and embrace change to achieve their desired outcome and that's that you know physically and visually is represented by taking the pill you know diving in so then we dive into the second act which is progress identity versus essence fake self versus real self with a new goal and plan the protagonist struggles to let go of their old life and overcome mounting obstacles finding it emotionally terrifying to embrace their true self despite knowing it's necessary often making excuses to avoid this transformation and as you can see morpheus shows them the real world which is not glamorous and not beautiful gross and ugly but it's the real world and it comes down to perspective so he learns about the matrix he learns about the programming it's honestly it's pretty cool and he goes to the programs and stuff like that the, and then the leap of faith is the jump program because it's a hard sell uh, if anybody told you to do that, you would be like, F off. It's, <laughs> you, you, it's, it's that whole faith thing. And this whole movie is really based upon faith and all these other aspects. It's a very religious. If you look at the supposed creator, this woman talks about, this is just a side note, talks about The Matrix and the other one she said she wrote, which was Terminator, were very Judeo-Christian, faith-based, you know, the Trinity, all these things, the one, all these, either way all faith so the characters in the hero journey it's all about faith so the point of no return is that faith so when he sees the oracle the thing about the oracle is it kind of messes with his head and says well you're then not the one so it's better that in my opinion the, 
So let's go back anyway. Turning point number three, or the point of no return, or the midpoint of the film. The protagonist makes a full commitment to their goal, driven by an intimate moment or realization that they are that they can't go back embrace their new perspective and shedding their old persona to connect genuinely with others so in that it's the meeting of the oracle the oracle kind of he doesn't want to be the the one the oracle says okay then you're not the one so it's it's more of she's just kind of making not making him but like he has to decide this for himself. He has to believe this himself. And if somebody tells you to believe something, it's like bringing a camel to water. You can't make a drink. The camel has to want to drink. So from that, then we get number four, complications and higher stakes. As the character pursues their new goal, returning becomes impossible. Hence the point of no return and the midpoint. Stakes arise, obstacles intensify. They must test their resolve while growing emotionally, facing both sweet fulfillment and tough challenges. And as you can see, in that background of everything, you can kind of, if you pay attention and when you watch the film, you can see Cypher, his character kind of like not wanting to be there, meeting with the agent or Agent Smith, Hugo Weaving's character and making a deal because he wants to go back to the Matrix. He, he, Matrix. He's the opposite of Neo. Neo's confused and afraid and all that, but he still wants to know. So, whereas Cypher knows, but he doesn't want to know anymore. So, you know, that leads to more complications and things like that. And you're going to lead to the major setback, which is turning point. But before I get to there, so then there's the glitch of the Matrix, which is brought upon by Cypher betraying them and putting the phone in the dumpster, which then leads the Matrix code to be changed by the agents. And you know, essentially block them from escaping, which causes a lot of people to die. And then in turn, Cypher betrays them again, gets into the booth, gets out first. And we come to turning point number four, which is major setbacks. A devastating event crushes the hero's hope, causing emotional devastation and making them feel responsible, yet pushing them to confront their new self at a higher emotional and psychological level. So obviously the ambush, Cypher, Cypher's betrayal, and essentially death to all, as I call it, is like Cypher starts killing off, switch APOC, and then goes to Trinity because he loves Trinity physically or whatever the hell, you know, it's not meant to be, but Trinity rather die than give up Neo. And luckily he gets killed by one of the controllers uh, back on the Nebuchadnezzar. And cause he, you know, he, he's still alive, thank God. But all hope is still lost because also Morpheus, Morpheus has been captured because he sacrificed himself and you get into act three. So all hope is lost. The characters feel shitty. They get out of the matrix and Neo's like, I'm going back in. So there's a rescue mission. So the final push, typically all films have a final push once the third act starts because they're so low they're so down they're like i can't go you know this new either they say i want to go back to my old world because all this horrible things happened the girl got killed or somebody got captured etc etc but in this case neo doesn't give up he has more faith now so he goes on a rescue mission trinity's like no i'm gonna go first etc etc all these things and they just kick ass in the film but then luckily Trinity gets out. They save Morpheus. Sorry, they save Morpheus. Then Trinity gets out along with Morpheus. But just as Neo's about to get out, the phone, which he can escape, gets blown up. But he's okay with that. He fights Agent Smith. And it's a pretty good showdown. But he still needs to get out. So we go to the climax of the whole thing. So turning point number five, the climax. The hero embracing their true self confronts the final challenge or villain. Even though it's even in this film, it's like the real climax is right here, but it kind of it kind of melds. Like the good thing about certain films, like you can meld it. It's like a it's a couple. It can sometimes be a couple of scenes, but just for the visual help, usually the turning points are turning points are usually one scene or a group of scenes that are in the same time frame but whatever helps you really. So the hero embracing their true self confronts the final challenger villain, resolves the central conflict and undergoes significant emotional revelations, ultimately emerging stronger. 
And in this case, it's a very, you know, resurrection type of thing going on. So the team escapes. Obviously, we were just seeing that. Uh, but Neo's left behind, obviously. So this should actually be moved up one. Shouldn't be moved here. And also, I'm going to leave this uh, for you guys to download and just you know, refill it, rearrange it, whatever you feel is best. But generally, this is how it is. So either way, going to number five, turning point five. So Neo is revived because, you know, agent killed him. He tried to escape and he dies. But then he believes he's the one. Internally, Trinity believes in him. He resurrects. Neo defeats Agent Smith, bending the rules of the Matrix and fully embracing his powers. He embodies it inside and out, mind, body and soul. So then the resolution, which is the ending, you know, tying loose ends, the resolution ties up loose ends, showing the heroes full embracing uh, their new identity and achieving a sense of fulfillment or peace, demonstrating the lasting impact of their journey and growth. Obviously, the film continues on to, what is it, three other films. There is like the middle one, the third one, and then the weird last one that came out a couple of years ago or a year ago or two. Yeah, they didn't bother to watch it. Not that good. But Neo sends a message to the machines de uh, declaring that he will show humanity the truth just like he's been shown the truth and went through the whole path of the hero's journey, a typical hero's journey, and then flies away, symbolizing his new freedom and power. So it's it's all symbolism and everything like that. It's It comes back to the themes that you set up in the beginning of the film. You kind of go back to that. You know, he, Trinity's doing that, but then he does something even greater, you know, all these other aspects. But yeah. So I'm going to leave this for you to download, uh, like and subscribe, uh, comment and tell me what other videos I should make or, you know, talk smack in the comment sections like you guys do. You know, you like my voice, hate my voice. I don't care. I'm here to give information like others have given me information. And for the for you that for the people that like it, you know, all love. All right. Till next time. Peace, weirdos.